Hey guys, it's Chase. Welcome back to a new video. Um, so today we have a couple of switch lights. Uh, this is one of them. This one says it has charging issues. Customer tried repair it. LOL. Good luck. <laughs> All right. So uh, first things first, we'll grab the switch charger here and use the USB amp meter. But actually, before I do that, I'm going to check the USB-C connector real quick and make sure that we don't have any bent pins before I just start jabbing a uh, USB-C charger in there and it looks fine. Alright, <clears throat> now just because the USB-C connector looks fine like the connector itself looks fine doesn't mean that it's actually fine and in fact the charger itself is like hollowed out it looks really bad. The switch light is in really really bad shape so uh, we'll go ahead and plug it in, just see what it does. Um, I'm <laughs> this could be a good thing or a bad thing, but we're going to just try it. Okay, the switch light is not turning on. It's charging at 5 volts, 0.9 milliamps, or 0 0.09 milliamps. Okay, let's try this. Okay, I just hear a click and nothing. Nothing. Okay. So this could be really bad or really good. Um, what I will do is I'm going to pull the board out of the switch light and we'll go over the microscope and see what the damage is. <laughs> okay, so all right, here's our area with the USB-C connector and as you can see there are no pins here. <laughs> I don't see pins here. I just see plastic. Just melted plastic. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's take a closer look at those lines there. The lines look fine. Um, yeah, I mean, what lines can you see, really? Okay. So let's flip the board over here. Just take a look and see what's going on on this side of the board. Looks like we have... You see that little IC right there? Yeah. This one right here. It looks kind of floated, so uh, we probably will have to deal with that. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and replace this port first, and then I'll deal with this chip later. That's the battery detection chip. So the console won't boot unless that chip is seated with the board. The M9 area looks, sorry, there's something on my tweezers there. M9 area looks somewhat fine. I mean, they, these all look factory. This all looks factory, except the port here. Looks like they only attempted to do the port. All right, I'm going to grab the board holder here. And we're just going to go ahead and put the board in a holder. All right. So, we'll go ahead and add some flux here to the board, and for good measure, I just, I have a huge, huge, huge feeling that there are going to be pulled pads under here, or shorted joints, I have no idea. So, um, when we use the hot air, we're not going to use a nozzle for this one. We're going to use it just straight, uh, the straight uh, hot air station, 410 degrees. Oh, 410 degrees Celsius and an air speed of 100 on our quick 861DW. We'll turn on the fume extraction. All right. And I'm going to put the heat directly underneath the port here. All right, here we go. Now what we're looking for is we're looking for the solder to just liquefy. I really don't know the chances of that, but we'll see. Okay, looks like the flux is doing its work here, which is good. Looks like the port is already ready to come up. Yeah. All right, grab a hold of it. All right, so it looks like we may have all of our lines there. I was I was literally certain in myself that we were going to have lines that were gone. Just traces missing kind of everywhere. 
I felt it. I felt it in my spirit, but apparently it's just not the case. Okay. So, that is a very, very good thing. Alright, let's add some flux here. Now, first thing we want to do is we're going to put some flux on these anchor points here. And we're going to take soldering iron. Okay, so we got the soldering iron and a little bit of wick here with a little bit of flux. We'll just heat up this. We're going to suck the solder right out of that hole. Alright, we're good to go there. Now this one. Of course, as soon as I uh, push down with my soldering iron just so ever so gently, the camera went completely out of focus. Genuinely sorry. Now before we move forward, I really want to clean up all of this flux because it's uh, kind of a mess now. And we'll use some IPA for this. Gosh guys, I was so certain that we had like some um, broken traces here. I was like, we definitely have broken traces, 100%. But nope, apparently not. We get lucky today. Is if you've ever done traces uh, or jump run, run these new pads like ran jumpers, it is a living nightmare. It's very very tedious work. If you've never seen a repair like this before, look at the charge port or the uh, USB C port on your cell phone if you have one on your cell phone, and then just imagine the size of these pads here. It's literally a nightmare. So what we're going to do is we're going to put um, a quick little bit of flux down here. Alright. Take our soldering iron and we're going to use some leaded solder for this. This is Kester 6040 solder. Alright. We're going to ball it up here. And just kind of flow it all these pads. There we go. I mean, that looks that looks really good. I'm going to put a little bit of blob here. A little, little bit of a blob there. I'm going to put my iron down on it. Kind of see if we can get the solder to flow maybe all the way through. Even if it is just enough. Just to get it to flow. Okay. That looks good to me. Now real quick, one last time, I want to clean this off real quick with some IPA because I want to use some fresh flux when we go to put the brand new port on. I want the port to look and be beautiful. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of flux as per the usual. Put it on these pins here, right? Alright. Use our soldering iron with a little bit of solder on it. All right. We're just going to flow these pins here. Just like that. So now when you solder it to the board, it's going to make a really beautiful bond. And it's going to look super fresh and you're going to be super happy because your switch will work. All right. Now let's add some flux here. We want these pins to make a really nice beautiful delicious bond when it solders and let's get it ready I usually use it off the table a little bit here in the board holder now we'll use our hot air we'll get it right underneath this area here basically what we're looking for is this anchor point here and this anchor point over here to melt once you can tell that it has flowed that is a good thing because that means those pads there that do our data and charging um, are also going to be flowing because they are uh, they do not have a large ground plane to have to uh, get heated up or however all right Alright, so things are flowing here, that's good. I always wait probably about two seconds or so. Alright. Now push down. 
remove the heat. All right, we should be good to go here. Well, would you look at that? You can actually see pins this time. The person that attempted to fix the port, uh, you could not see pins at all. So let's go ahead and add flux here. Since we can see these pins, we can go ahead and touch them up. All right. I would say that we are good to go at this point. Let's just go ahead and do our little test here with a pair of tweezers to make sure that these pins are soldered. And we are good. This port is basically ready to go. Now we just need to flow these uh, little joints up here. Best way to do it is put a little bit of flux here. A little bit of flux there. A little bit of flux here, there. Just go ahead and flow that right there. Boom, that's done. And that is done. That is all it takes. All right, so now we're good to go. We just go ahead and clear this port now with some IPA. And just cleans up nice and easy. No headache and port solder's on super nice and our joints look super fresh and it's just everybody's happy everybody's happy now let's take a, another gander here at the logic board real quick all right now let's kick on that fume extractor we're going to put some flux around this chip here grab our hot air Get up nice, close, and personal with this area. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of flux here. take our soldering iron and we just want to clean up these pads and lower them down a little bit made a little solder bridge here there we go okay now I'm just gonna clean up this area so we'll use fresh flux when we go ahead and put a new chip on now I'm going to add some flux here so we have a new chip here it's right over here it is right here Look at that, it's got fresh solder balls on it. Looks amazing. All right, so it goes on in this direction here. Just like that. The best thing to do is to put it in the area as best you can. And that looks right about correct. Now when you're using the hot air, you wanna approach it slowly. Uh, otherwise your IC will blow away. You don't wanna blow away the IC, you know what I mean? So we're approaching it slowly here. Try to keep it in the general area. Now it's a little crooked. There it is. We're approaching it. There it is. Give it a little nudge. That's it. Alright, we are good to go. That chip is now soldered onto the board perfectly. Okay. So I'm going to call that good. Um, and now our switch is only charging at 5 volts, so um, I want to feel this area because we're not, we're not, the board's not too hot. I want to go ahead and test these 
capacitors around the M9 IC and we're going to test them in continuity mode where they should be. Okay, so let's go ahead and check these capacitors here. No, 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 no. Okay. So that's good. We can check all of these caps here. All right. All right. So um, everything's testing fine. Uh, we got the M9 chip has no shorts around it, which is really good. BQ has no shorts around it. Um, we did put this IC and flow it back down to the board. I am confident that it's probably fine now. Um, last but not least. If the switch doesn't work and it's still not charging right, um, there's a possibility that this chip is bad, um, even though it doesn't show short. So let's put this back in the board and we'll take a look and see what it's doing. Okay, so the switch is connected enough to test and we got a known good battery in there. Let's plug it in and see what it does. All right. <laughs> it's working. Wait for it. It's powering on now. There it is. <laughs> oh yes, dude. Oh my goodness. I don't think I've touched connected now, but uh, how the buttons work. But yeah, it's it's working. There it is. So typically, when someone changes the USB-C connector on the switch light, they usually end up knocking the fuel gauge IC. The fuel gauge is, IC is called that because it is a battery detection chip that also has a current sensing resistor in the circuit uh, that way it can tell what percentage the battery is at and it can detect the battery being there plugged into the board. Um, if the console can't detect the battery then it's not going to turn on. And so that is how you fix a Nintendo Switch Lite that uh, was a prior repair attempted by another customer. Usually when I see USB-C ports attempted by customers you're either going to find blown M9s that you, that were changed out, you're going to find the port is completely mangled, uh, you're going to find the BQIC is lopped over. <laughs> um, those are the things typically that I find. Usually on a normal day when I have a switch light come in that needs a USB-C connector, it can be just the USB-C connector or the USB-C connector and the M9. So it's, they're kind of one and the same, it's kind of a 50-50 thing because sometimes if the port is mangled enough or something happens, it ends up blowing M9. And then you have to replace both. So anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.